Hello friends in this video we are going to discuss about solar panels, which we all know a great source of renewable energy. In this video we will know about some basic question asked about solar panels so let's start. Can the global energy demand be met solely with solar panels? To meet the global electricity requirements we won't even need to completely cover the Sahara Desert with solar panels. Our Earth receives so much solar energy that it's unimaginable. At all times, 173,000 terawatts of solar energy reaches the Earth. This is more than 10,000 times the global electricity requirement. It is estimated that the sunlight reaching the Earth in 1.5 hours, can meet the annual global energy consumption. It explains, that even if solar panels are installed in relatively smaller area, it can meet the global requirements. Here comes the question, how much smaller area, how much land we need to be covered with solar panels. According to research paper we almost need 500,000 square kilometer of land to lay our solar panels, to meet the energy demand of the world. To view as 500,000 square kilometer may sound a bigger area, so now we will try to understand about it with some examples. The total area of highways in the United States is 94,000 square kilometer, so it stands about 20% of the 500,000 square kilometer required. The United States to consume 20% of the global energy consumption. It means that the resource spent by United States to lay the roads, for the vehicles, if solar panels are installed in an area of an equal size, United States electricity demands can be met solely by solar energy. There is also an example with golf courses, size of the atypical golf course is 1 square kilometer. The world accounts about 40,000 golf courses around the world. So if solar farms are set up instead of the golf courses, it'll account for 10% of the land requirement. So obviously, the plan sounds wonderful. So now question comes why government around the world don't implement it. The reason is that when we think of practically implementing many problem crop up. The first problem will be of energy distribution. Suppose we have built many solar panels in various parts of world, but for taking the electricity to every part of the world would need a lot of money. Moreover, when electricity is transmitted from one place to another, it results in wastage of electricity. The reason is that when we think of practically implementing many problem crop up. The next problem would be of maintenance. Who will maintain these solar panels? As solar panels require regular cleaning, any dirt on them results in poor performance. The next problem is of life cycle, once installed, the solar panels will not continue producing electricity till eternity. The solar panels have a lifespan of nearly 25 years. So till 25 years we can get electricity from it, after that it needs to be reinstalled with new. But for this a lot of resources and funds have to be spent on it. So now let's move to the solutions. Imagine now the solar panels from government level to individual level. Most of the problem that we encounter at a big scale, are irrelevant on an individual level. If people start installing solar panels in their homes, problem of maintenance will be easy at individual level, there will be no problem in energy distribution. And in terms of cost, there is no cheaper electricity option than rooftop solar electricity. So, if we talk about individual solar panel system they are of two types, on-grid and off-grid. On-grid means that the solar system that you install at your home, will be connected to the grid. There you will get the facility of net metering. Meaning, during the day, the electricity produced by your solar panels, will first power your house, and if there is any surplus, it will be transmitted to the grid. So that it could be used by others. And at night, when the solar panels do not produce electricity, you can use electricity from the grid. The second option is off-grid system. It means that you do not connect your solar panel system to the grid, instead, it is connected to a battery, when there's no solar energy at night, the energy stored in battery will be used to meet electricity requirements at night. The problem here is that the cost of the batteries is often very high. That's why, on-grid solar panel system is more beneficial. The average age of solar panel system is 25 years so you will get free electricity for next 25 years after a certain investment in it, at individual level. So, there are a lot of potential in solar energy if we talk about individual level. So now we will know about some problems in solar energy. But before that let me bust some myth many people often have about solar energy. 
During a cloudier day, or during winter, people think solar energy will not work well. This is a big myth. You would see that if during the summer, 6 units per kilowatt per day is produced, it is 3 units per kW per day in monsoon, and 4 units per kilowatt per day in winter. So, there is a slight difference, it isn't significant. Because the concept of photovoltaic depends on light. As long as there is sufficient light around it, irrespective of any rain or cloud, it kept working. This is why in many cold places you will see solar panels. In northern European countries, many houses have solar panels even though, it is very cold there. Because as long as there's light, they'll work. Now let's know about its disadvantages the first is of carbon emissions. This is because most of the solar cells, is made of silicone, glass. Additionally, metals such as silver, copper, indium, and pillarium are used. These materials need to be extracted to manufacture solar panels, that has a huge environmental cost. Collecting silicone and glass isn't problematic. They are found everywhere and had a non-toxic method of extraction. But the other metals silver, copper need to be mined. And that mining leads to soil, water and air pollution. The greenhouse gas emissions are increased. And the entire process to manufacture solar panels in the factories, had its own set of carbon emissions. Obviously if we compare this with the fossil fuels like coal, gas, and oil, compared to them, using solar energy is definitely better. But, the point is that solar energy does not have zero impact on our environment. It is estimated that the carbon output of solar energy and solar panels is 20 times lower as compared to coal. The second disadvantage is the life cycle of the solar panels. What happens when the life cycle of solar energy runs out? you consider replacing them. But what happens to the old solar panel? Can that be recycled? Today, it isn't very profitable to recycle solar panels. So one time people has to find way to make it more recycle friendly. But, the future of solar energy is bright. Each year, the cost of producing solar panels is going down. New technologies and innovations are seen. The efficiency of solar panels is increasing. People are coming with more creative ways to generate solar energy not only in land, or in houses, even on water bodies. Solar panels have been introduced in the transport section as well. Solar-powered boats and aeroplanes are being tested. Today's solar-powered satellites are in progress. More than 50 British technology organizations such as Airbus, UK Space Energy have taken initiative and collaborating together to create solar power plants in space. The plan was to create a orbiting power plant. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications.